Geostorm is directed by Dean Devlin and it stars Gerard Butler and Jim Sturgis. And it's about this network of satellites that are designed to control the world's weather and climate and suddenly they're turning on the world and they're causing big storms and a lot of death and destruction and Gerard Butler and Jim Sturgis along with a few other actors are trying to figure out what's going on and a huge plot unfolds. Now I'm going to be talking spoilers so this is your spoiler warning this movie came out last weekend so yeah you've had your chance to go see it I had my chance I was a little late to it I understand that but let's get to this review and I'm going to keep this as simple as possible so I'm going to start with what I liked about this movie, I actually did enjoy the cast for this movie. Gerard Butler, I like Gerard Butler, he just seems to be landing these not so great movies anymore. Jim Sturgis, while I'm not the biggest fan of his, he did okay in this movie. Abby Cornish, uh, she plays a Secret Service agent, which I actually did enjoy her character. I didn't necessarily care for the, the love story between her character and Jim Sturgis's character, but it, it, I guess it had to be there just because we needed some extra tension. I actually really did like Andy Garcia playing the president. Um, and Ed Harris, uh, I kind of saw the plot twist of his character being the villain coming from a mile away. I mean, he just, he, he looks like a bad guy now. He used to be able to play either role. In this movie, he's just like, you first see him and you're like, okay, he's behind the whole thing. I already got it figured out. But other than seeing that twist coming from a mile away, I did actually appreciate his character being in it. The idea behind the story was great. I, I actually really enjoyed the idea of controlling Earth's weather and climate. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting concept. And that's pretty much all I have to say positive about this movie. Uh, there's a lot that I did not like this movie. And I honestly, I really did want to like this movie. The first trailer I saw for this movie looked, it made it look amazing. I thought this was going to be something completely different. And then when we got that second trailer and we get those, we get more dialogue from the movie and especially the scene where Andy Garcia playing the president, they're in the, the taxi cab. After the stunt that Abby Cornish's character pulls driving this car, uh, Andy Garcia's character, the president, looks over to Jim Sturgis's character and says, marry her. And, I don't know, I just, that line within the movie was better, but in the trailer it just looked, it didn't look good. And I gotta be honest, this movie has a lot of negatives. And I'm just gonna start with the beginning. Uh, they tried to play it off too much like Iron Man, namely Iron Man 2, uh, when Tony Stark is called in and he's, it's like this Senate meeting or something, and he's basically approached by government officials saying, you need to hand over the Iron Man suit. And he's like, no, it's mine. They basically do the same thing in this. Uh, they call Gerard Butler to some type of hearing, and government officials are telling him, you need to hand over the Dutch boy, which I don't like the name of the, the station being Dutch boy. I get it. It makes sense within the context of the movie and the story and everything. But the name, Dutch Boy, it just, it doesn't work so great. It, it sounds pretty dumb when you're saying it in a review like this. Now, when they bring in narration within movies, you expect it to go throughout the movie. In this one, it kind of just does the, the stereotypical thing where it's like, hey, you know, we don't know how to start and end it, so let's just throw narration at the beginning and end. No other time in the movie does the narration take place, so it's pointless. It's just a way for them to easily get you introduced to the story and easily end the movie. That's all it is. It's a, it's a writing crutch, and I didn't like that. Another thing that goes against the writers is they tried to drop too much comedy in this movie. There's not that much comedy, but when there is comedy, it's not even good comedy. I don't think I laughed once in this movie I might have smiled like oh okay that's they, they tried to be funny but that's about it I I was in the theater with very few people nobody was laughing out loud I actually heard talking over a few row a few seats next to me and I don't think they were enjoying the movie so yeah it just they they did not the jokes did not land at all 
Something else that really bothered me is the fact that they just kept driving home the idea that Jim Sturgis and Gerard Butler's characters are brothers. They bring it up so many times. If I could see it a second time, I probably won't, but I don't know if I want to. But they probably say it at least a dozen times, if not more, that, hey, we're brothers. We don't turn our backs on each other. That's the brother's secret code and everything like that. I didn't care too much for that. Another thing is the plot. They, they tried to get way too smart for their own good in this movie. Um, it's not Ocean's Eleven. They really tried, I think mainly because of Indy Garcia's in it, that that's where I'm connecting it to. The fact that they have to figure all these things out and they're in space and all this other stuff, I just, it was too much, it was too complex, and it should have been a little bit more dumbed down. And uh, I don't know, I just didn't care for how complex they wanted it to. I appreciated the effort, but I didn't, I didn't care for it. Another thing is the editing in this movie just felt way too fast paced. Sometimes you just need to let the scene exist the way it is. You just need to stay on one shot for a while. That's what I love about The Walking Dead, especially this latest episode, is they do a lot of long takes and you get to see everything in this shot for a long time. Sometimes uncomfortably long. And that's what I felt that they should have done in this movie, is let the scenes exist. Now, this is where I gotta talk about CGI. It wasn't good. I honestly, I thought 2012 had better CGI than this movie. Um, the weather effects just didn't do so well. The tornadoes, I, I don't care if you have a weather altering satellite system, tornadoes aren't gonna form that fast. Like, boom, tornado. I didn't like that. Also, the fact that <laughs> when they end up turning off the satellites and everything, all the weather just stops. Again, I don't care if you have a weather controlling satellite system, if you turn those off and you've already got a thunderstorm happening or tornadoes happening or a blizzard happening, it's not just gonna stop immediately. It's gonna keep going, it's gonna have to dissipate. So if they're within one to two seconds of a geostorm, I'm pretty sure it's already happened. There's a point, and I don't think you can judge it by seconds, uh, there's a point where it's just, you've crossed the point of no return, and I'm pretty sure they passed that point already. Um, the lightning effects during the chase scene was, it wasn't good. I mean, I get what they were trying to do, but it was just, it was, there was way too much going on. And if you are prone to seizures, this is definitely not the movie for you. Because that scene in particular, the lightning storm scene in Orlando, Florida, when they're driving the taxi and they're being chased by other agents, that is not a scene to watch if you are prone to seizures. Because there's so much flashing. I actually had to like squint my eyes for a little bit because I'm like, this is... This is way too intense. I can't. I can't handle this. So yeah, if you don't don't watch this, if you are prone to seizures, that hailstorm was awful. Okay. Now, how often have you ever seen a hailstorm where chunks of hail are flying almost horizontally? And those are small pieces of hail compared to what they show in this movie. And some of these in that scene with the hailstorm, some of these huge hail chunks the size of like three school buses they're flying at like a 45 degree angle i don't care how much wind there is that big of a chunk of ice is not going to be falling at a 45 degree angle it's going to go straight down it's too heavy to be pushed by any type of wind unless it's stronger than a category 5 hurricane it's not going to be going any more than straight down Sorry, that's, that's just how physics work. That's how gravity works. <laughs> Again, we get a zero gravity scene. Now this one actually does make sense within the context of the movie because they're out in space. But I kind of feel like they're like, hey, you know, we have this satellite system that we should turn off the power so we can have a zero gravity scene too. Because they do a spacewalk that's perfectly fine, that's totally justifiable, but then they do it inside of a corridor, so it makes it, it just adds more stress, more tension, 
and I just saw it as a way for them to include another zero G scene. And while I'm on that topic, I have to talk about that those spacewalk scenes. When they're in those spacesuits to go out in space, so they're protected from the elements. They move too easily. Have you ever seen a spacewalk video from the NASA live streams of the ISS? They're moving very slow and calculated because they're out in space. If they make one mistake, they could be floating off into infinity and never return. So <laughs> for them to just be like, I'm going to go jump over here. Yes, I understand that at the end of the movie, they are doing this to save their lives, but when they're able to jump hundreds or thousands of feet, however far they're going in space, and they just grab onto something and then they flip around, they're not hurting themselves, they're not damaging their suits, and they're able to move like they're wearing a t-shirt, like me. They, they, it doesn't work like that. Those spacesuits are thick. It's hard to move in those things as far as I know. I've, I've never worn one, but the way that astronauts move in real life makes it seem like it's difficult to move in those things. So for them to move the way they had the astronauts move in gravity, I hated the fact that they did that in gravity. It, just, it was so unrealistic. They're moving way too easily. They did that in this one and it just, it bothers me. It's not realistic at all. Not that this movie has any realism to it, hardly at all, but still, try and take a little bit more care in that aspect. After Tomorrow and a few other disaster movies that I can't quite think of right now, but you know what? Those movies are fun. They're, they're, they're just popcorn flicks that you just shove. Yeah. I really did try to like this movie. I was seeing a lot of reviews that were giving it a bunch of crap. They were kind of tearing it apart, and I guess my review is no different. But, you know, I, I appreciated 2012 and The Day After Tomorrow. I kind of like those movies. I, but again, I really did try to like it. There's just too many characters and characters that they kind of forget about and then bring in at the end of the movie. They're like, oh yeah, we kind of need this character. Like Gerard Butler's character's daughter. She didn't need to be in the movie. They just, they used her for the narration and just a reason for Gerard Butler's character to care to come home. That's really all it was. And I would have appreciated them having the guts to actually kill off Gerard Butler's character because it would have made it more of a serious movie. And it would have been like, oh man. They talk about, you know, hey, if we have a Geostorm event, there will be so much destruction we'll never be able to recover. Do you know how much damage was caused in this movie? Quadrillions of dollars, probably more. Like Dubai was destroyed. That city alone is going to cost way more money than I can even fathom. And all the other cities that were destroyed in the process of everything else that was happening. Like, th this is not something that <laughs> the Earth could really recover from for a long time. Millions of people had already died at that point. So... They, they play it off like, hey, we saved the world. Yeah, but still, a lot of people died and a lot of destruction was caused. So, this movie just, it didn't have heart. It tried, but it really didn't. The twists I saw coming from a mile away. I actually thought I saw other twists that they were like, you know what, let's not even worry about that. Because Jim Sturgis puts that little hologram thing, whatever they call it, in his pocket. And um, Ed Harris's character, you know... He grabs him by the chest or the, the shoulder or pats him on the chest or something and I'm like, oh, he stole it right there. They, that never comes into play. I thought it was going to come into play, but it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> there were just things that I thought they dropped the ball on over and over again. Comedy didn't land. The CGI was just there. It wasn't good to look at. Physics were all over the place. Uh, it just it didn't work for me and I got to give Geostorm a C minus, uh, you know, there are some saving graces of this movie, like the cast. Uh, I love Gerard Butler. He's in 300. That's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Jim Sturgis, he's okay. I hate his hair in this movie. Uh, if he's like a government official, he wouldn't, I don't think he'd be allowed to have that kind of messy hair in the back. It looks like he just got out of bed. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's a disaster movie. 
So it's, you know, it's, what do you expect? You, you gotta go in there just expecting a basic plot, stupid lines, and a lot of destruction and CGI, and that's what you get. You don't get a good story in this movie, so sorry. That's what this movie is. So what did you guys think of Geostorm? Did you like it, love it, or hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. I was originally going to go see only The Brave, but Karen wants to go see that movie too, so hopefully we'll be going to see that movie this weekend, and we'll get the review up as soon as possible. Yes, we have fallen behind on our Star Wars reviews. We're going to get caught up on those as soon as possible before The Last Jedi comes out. And Thor Ragnarok comes out next week too. There's a lot of big movies coming out over the next couple months. So... Be on the lookout for those reviews, I'm excited to do them. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can be notified of when we upload new content. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.